Hello, welcome to the Teresa Shingler Knits podcast. My name is Teresa. I'm a knitting designer based in the Midlands in the UK. And this is my podcast, mostly about my knitting practice. Today's episode is going to be quite a short one, hopefully. Um, I'm recording on a Thursday, which is unusual for me, but I wanted to show that I had finished this, what I'm calling my Christmas jumper that I've been talking about over the last few, few episodes. I was, I'd been trying to get it finished for Friday the 3rd, which is tomorrow, and tomorrow I'll be far too busy to record. So today's episode is just about this jumper. As I say, I've been calling it my Christmas jumper. Um, the working title for, for it actually is the Iced Hearts jumper, because the, the, mo the, the motifs on the yolk of this jumper are based on iced gingerbread cookies. Um, which I felt was festive, but not 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 in your face in your face Christmas. So I will undoubtedly wear this jumper all winter long and not feel too um, embarrassed that I'm wearing a Christmas jumper in February and March. Although I suspect people will wonder why I wear the same jumper quite so much. Um, so I finished this jumper on Tuesday night late um wednesday i put in all the ends which is yesterday um i washed it and blocked it well so, sort of blocked it I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute um ironed it which again i'll talk about in a minute and today it is ready to wear and i never want to take it off it is so so warm and snuggly we've had snow, snow again overnight so it's particularly lovely. I will show you first the yarn I've used. If you if you've watched my previous episodes, you will know that I've been I was massively influenced by Rebecca of Crea Bear, and I put in an order for far too many canes of woolly knits, four ply four ply British wool, and that's what this jumper is made out of. So the main colour is this beautiful. I think it's called the cinnamon colourway. I don't know if you see, but it's got, you can see it's got a beautiful halo, a really deep, rich colour. There's yellow and red and brown and all sorts of beautiful, beautiful colours in there. So that is the main colour. This was a 500 gram skein. And as you can see, I've probably got about 100 grams left still, which is really, really good value. Um, when 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 I bought this, it was 18 pound a cone, um, and I've used four fifths of the cone um, and I've got it is a quite a large jumper it's finished size of this is I think 48 inches because I wanted quite a lot of positive positive ease um, it's got long 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 and I'm tall with very long arm sleeves with poof it's a line shape so it's it's a really really quite a big jumper it's ever so light it's just this is glorious so that was the main color um, then the mo the main contrast colour colour is this cream cream colour which is called pure Aaron and again that's that is lovely lovely and I don't know whether you can see along here and across the neckline is a tiny pop of this beautiful red called cassette red cassette red I'll link them all in the bit below. I will put some footage at the end of of more details of this jumper. Um, I haven't got any pictures of my wearing it at the moment. Um, I'm sure when I come to write this pattern up that I will put plenty of plenty of pictures of my wearing it and or what have you. But for now, because time's short, it'll have to be of hanging on on a hanger. <laughs> but hopefully, you'll be able to see the four full details and this is this is the bottom of the yoke it's got more little hearts and little motifs yeah I am really really pleased with this this neckline was going to be quite a, a wider neckline and a, and a deeper a deeper rib but when, while I was um, finish, finishing it um, I, you know, I had my instructions and, and I'd already written, written the pattern out and I was knitting it and it was really 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 cold um we had snow on monday night no mon 
was Sunday night. We had snow on Sunday night. Monday, it was really, really cold and snowy. Tuesday, although it was mild, it was cold and wet and damp and horrible. I was feeling cold and had enough of winter. And I just wanted a neck that came right the way up. And I have a bit, a bit of a thing at the moment about these little um, um, sort of pie crust necklines and bishop sleeves. So I, so I modified the pattern to make it a much narrower neck and then put this little pico edging and it's, it's turned and folded and stitched down which 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 makes it sit uh, sit up slightly around the neckline um what else do i need to tell you about this <clears throat> oh yes i was going to say about the way i blocked it well it's not re it's not really blocking um Unless I've knit something that's lacy or has um, a pointy, you know, like a, a scalloped edge or an edge with points, or it's something that's that's a uh, that is a sample that has has to be sent off or off to be photographed, um, I don't usually block by have, having the wet item and pinning it out um, to size. Um, I don't like things sitting around wet. And cold for days um there's not really space and, and, and certainly at this at this time of year in britain it's frequently cold and damp and not very nice um lacy things and you know of scalloped edges and, and what have you do need that level of, of definition but garments i don't generally find i don't generally find need that um so what i did with this the yarn itself in the cone when when i knit this up it was it, it's quite it was quite almost stringy i would say and the color work um, as you can see some of these motifs there are long spaces between and um, between the motifs so there's a long way um, to carry the the contrast color um and, be, and before it was washed and, and what have you um I could see where, where where I had carried the colours, you know, because there's that almost almost stringiness, almost gappiness in the yarn, um, and the yarn has got quite a lot of spinning oil on it. Uh, so I wanted to uh, um, get rid of that and, and 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 have the yarn bloom. So what I did was I made up a big bowl of of really hot hot, hot water with. With a washing up liquid in about it about a tablespoon worth of it um, and then and, and i submerged the whole jumper in that and let it sit there until it was until it was tepid what's it say that's okay sorry um so i yes yeah, so, so i left it there until it was tepid and then um i then i took it out squeezed the squeezed the excess water out of it and then made up another bowl of tepid water with with wool wash in it and i use i like to use eucalan for and for woolly wools um i put it in there i left it about half an hour it, it gave it a very gentle agitate took it out squeezed the water out and then rinsed it twice in water of the same temperature until until the water until the rinse water was clear and then I controversially put it in my washing machine and to spin the excess water out and even more horrifying I always spin it at full speed to get as much water out as possible um I have done it lots of times on my washing machine and I know that my rinse cycle doesn't take in ex extra water and doesn't and, and doesn't tumble it back into or back into or back into it just it just spins it out um i wouldn't necessarily recommend it and for anyone else if they've never tried it before um so i then took it out of the machine put it put it on the radiator to dry and it was dry within sort of eight, eight, eight hours and then i took a steam iron with a lot of steam and quite hot um for most of it i just held the iron ab above the jumper um and to let the steam do its work of flattening it out um 
there were a couple of places where, where it had been sort of scrunched behind, behind the radiator for, for needing a, a gentle iron. Um, I let it cool, checked check the measurements, which, which which was spot on because it was this is very well behaving wool that doesn't and the swatch and, and didn't lie at all, thankfully. Um, and then it was ready to wear, and it is lovely, and it doesn't it doesn't smell of sheep at all anymore. Because although I love rustic walls, I hate the smell of sheep. I mean, I, I like sheep smelling like sheep, but I don't like wool smelling of sheep, and I definitely don't like my clothes smelling of sheep. So the yarn has bloomed, it's filled in all the gaps, it's got a beautiful, even, just beautiful, even texture. It's just, inc I mean, my knitting is not necessarily that perfect. It is just so so perfectly smooth and wonderful it's very well behaving wool yep so i shall show you the floats and then i'm done and now that i've taken taken it off and disarranged my hair i will show you my i'll show you the floats i don't know whether it, are all knitters as fascinated by floats as i am i don't know i think we are aren't we so these are the floats and a large part of the reason they look so beautiful is because it is extremely well behaved yarn. Um, as you can see at the bottom here I've caught where the, where the gaps between the, mo the motifs here are, are really quite long. I've caught the, caught the yarn in many times and before I washed it it was quite evident on the right side um but now it's been washed and it's bloomed um it really let me find let me show you really it's not at all it's not at all evident if you if you were to give it a stretch and get really really close you'll be able to see but if anyone does that they can jog on especially when they're wearing it um yeah so i am extremely pleased with it um, I'll show you the neckline as well. So as you can see, the rib grows out of this last colour work repeat here. It's ribbed. There's a little red, red pico edge along the top, and then on the back side, it's a stocking stitch, and it's sewn down on the inside, and that just causes the neckline to just sit up and like a little a pie crust collar, a bit bit obsessed about Edwardiana at the moment. Well well in in fashion I'm not in history. It was grim. Um I'm not someone who would ever want to live in the past. But some of their fashion detail were very pretty. Um yeah so that's a, that's the neckline. Yeah, really really pleased with that. That that was a last minute it um changed um, to the pattern that I've that I'd written so I'm really pleased with that. I will put some footage at the end of of the whole jumper and on the hanger. Um, I'm sure when I come to write the pattern up and it goes for test knitting and it's then released there'll be plenty of footage of me wearing it but I haven't got time today and if I don't get it done before tomorrow it'll be next week and then hopefully I'll have plen plenty more to show you then. So I will leave it here and dash off because that's long enough on one jumper I think. And hope to see hope to see you next time. Bye.